Criticism of Protestantism covers critiques and questions raised about Protestantism, the Christian tradition based on Martin Luther's Protestant Reformation. While critics praise Protestantism's Christ-centered and Bible-centered faith, Protestantism is faced with criticism mainly from the Catholic Church and some Orthodox churches, although Protestant denominations have also engaged in self-critique and criticized one another. The Catholic biblical critique asserts that the sola scriptura principle of Lutheran and Reformed churches is inaccurate according to the Catholic doctrine. While Catholic tradition agrees with Protestantism that faith, not works, is necessary for initial Justification. Some contemporary Protestant scholars, such as N.T. Wright, affirm that both faith and works are necessary for justification. Catholic critics and revisionists also challenge the historicity of the Great Apostasy, a premise of the Protestant Reformation. Topic: <laughs> Sources of criticism. While Catholic leaders have been seeing the positive side of the founder of Protestantism, Martin Luther, calling him thoroughly Christocentric, and saying that his intention was to renew the Church and not to divide it, Catholic doctrine views Protestantism as suffering from defects, not possessing the fullness of truth and lacking the fullness of the means of salvation. Protestants also engage in self-criticism, a special target of which is the fragmentation of Protestant denominations. In addition, due to the fact that Protestantism is not a monolithic tradition, some Protestant denominations criticize the beliefs of other Protestants. For example, the Reformed churches criticize the Methodist churches for the latter denomination's belief in the doctrine of unlimited atonement, in a long-term debate between Calvinists and Arminians. Topic. Criticism of foundational principles Topic. Sola Scriptura Sola Scriptura, one of the five principles shared by Lutheran and Reformed churches, originated during the Protestant Reformation, is a formal principle of many Protestant denominations. Baptist churches as well share the Sola Scriptura principle and state that the Bible alone is the sole source of knowledge, truth and revelation sent directly from God, the only true word of God, sufficient of itself to be the supreme authority of the Christian faith. In contrast, the Anglican Communion and the Methodist Church uphold the doctrine of Prima Scriptura, which holds that sacred tradition, reason and experience are the sources of Christian doctrine, but are nonetheless subordinate to the authority of the Bible as well. According to Benedict XVI, the Catholic Church holds a very different view on the Bible and doesn't consider itself to be a religion of the book. While in the Catholic Church we greatly venerate the sacred scriptures, the Christian faith is not a religion of the book, Christianity is the religion of the Word of God. Together with the Church's living tradition, the scripture constitutes the supreme rule of faith. Justification by faith and grace alone <inaudible> Sola fide At the crux of the disputes are the doctrine on justification and sola fide, two of the core principles of Protestantism. The immediate official Catholic response to the Reformation, the Council of Trent, affirmed in 1547 the foundational importance of faith as part of its doctrinal tradition. We are therefore considered to be justified by faith, because faith is the beginning of human salvation, the foundation, and the root of all justification. less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 none of those things which precede justification, whether faith or works merit the grace itself of justification. Many centuries later, in 1999 the Pontifical Council for Promoting Christian Unity and the Lutheran World Federation have found basic doctrinal agreements in the Joint Declaration on the Doctrine of Justification, showing a common understanding of the justification, by grace alone, in faith in Christ's saving work and not because of any merit on our part, we are accepted by God and receive the Holy Spirit, who renews our hearts while equipping and calling us to good works. The document states that the churches now share a common understanding of our justification by God's grace through faith in Christ. To the parties involved, this essentially resolves the 500-year-old conflict over the nature of justification which was at the root of the Protestant Reformation. 
The World Methodist Council formally recognized the Declaration in 2006. Although an important step forward in the Catholic Lutheran dialogue, the Declaration continues to show the unsurpassable differences of thought that separate the Catholic Church from the Protestant tradition. Lutherans uphold Luther's doctrine that, human beings are incapable of cooperating in their salvation. God justifies sinners in faith alone. According to N.T. Wright, Paul, in company with mainstream Second Temple Judaism, affirms that God's final judgment will be in accordance with the entirety of a life led in accordance, in other words, with works. Benedict XVI in 2006 declared that, It is to God and His grace alone that we owe what we are as Christians. Methodist churches have always emphasized that ordinarily both faith and good works play a role in salvation, in particular, the works of piety and the works of mercy, in Wesleyan Arminian theology, are indispensable for our sanctification. Methodist Bishop Scott J. Jones in United Methodist Doctrine says that faith is always necessary to salvation unconditionally. Good works are the exterior result of true faith but are necessary only conditionally, that is, if there is time and opportunity. Topic. Criticism of the Joint Declaration within the Catholic Church The Vatican's note in response to the Declaration said that the Protestant formula, at the same time righteous and sinner, is not acceptable, in baptism everything that is really sin is taken away, and so, in those who are born anew there is nothing that is hateful to God. It follows that the concupiscence disordered desire that remains in the baptized is not, properly speaking, sin. <laughs> Catholic opinion on the great apostasy According to Benedict XVI, the encounter of Christianity with enlightened Greek culture and philosophy is not apostasy into paganism, but rather a natural development in the history of the early Church. Ratzinger also states that the translation of the Old Testament in Greek and the fact that the New Testament itself was written in Greek are a direct consequence of the biblical revelation's reception by the Hellenistic world. Topic: <laughs> Apostolic succession. Some Catholic critics state that Protestant acceptance of the Great Apostasy implies their non-acceptance of the apostolic succession in the Catholic Church and Orthodox Churches. At the same time, a number of Protestant churches, including Lutheran churches, the Moravian Church, and the Anglican Communion, affirm that they ordain their clergy in line with the apostolic succession. In 1922, the Eastern Orthodox Ecumenical Patriarch of Constantinople recognized Anglican orders as valid. The Catholic Church has rejected the validity of Anglican apostolic succession as well as that of other Protestant churches, saying in regard to the latter that the proclamation of sola scriptura led inevitably to an obscuring of the older idea of the Church and its priesthood. Thus through the centuries, the imposition of hands either by men already ordained or by others was often in practice abandoned. Where it did take place, it did not have the same meaning as in the Church of tradition. Topic. Criticism of doctrine and practices Topic. Eucharist Some Catholic critics say that Protestant churches, including the Anglican, Lutheran, Methodist, and Reformed traditions, each teach a different form of the doctrine of the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist, with Lutherans affirming Christ's presence as a sacramental union, and Reformed, Presbyterian Christians affirming a pneumatic presence. Baptists, Anabaptists, the Plymouth Brethren, Jehovah's Witnesses, and other Restorationist Protestant denominations affirm that the Lord's Supper is a memorial of Jesus' death, and consider the belief in the real presence of Christ to be unbiblical or a misinterpretation of the Scriptures. Topic. Confession and other sacraments While some Protestants, such as Lutherans, have retained the sacrament of confession, most Protestant denominations do not. Topic. Prayers for the dead The Anglican and Methodist traditions along with Eastern Orthodoxy, affirm the existence of an intermediate state, Hades, and thus pray for the dead, as do many Lutheran churches, such as the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, which 
remembers the faithful departed in the prayers of the people every Sunday, including those who have recently died and those commemorated on the church calendar of saints. Historical and ecclesiological critique Protestant churches are considered by some Catholic critics as a negative force which «protests» and revolts against the Catholic Church. Catholic theologian Karl Adam wrote, "...the 16th-century revolt from the Church led inevitably to the revolt from Christ of the 18th century, and thence to the revolt from God of the 19th." And thus the modern spirit has been torn loose from the deepest and strongest supports of its life, from its foundation in the absolute, in the self-existent being, in the value of all values. Instead of the man who is rooted in the absolute, hidden in God, strong and rich, we have the man who rests upon himself, the autonomous man." In response to Adam's accusation towards Protestantism, the church historian and Protestant theologian Wilhelm Pock pointed out that in summing up, the Roman Catholic criticism that the Reformation and Protestantism resulted from a revolt against the Church, we conclude that the Roman Catholic leaders of the 16th century are not without responsibility for the breakup of Christian unity, therefore the schism between Protestants and Catholics was an inevitable consequence of the Protestant Reformation for which both sides have to be considered responsible. See also Anti-Christian sentiment Anti-Catholicism Anti-Eastern Orthodox sentiment Anti-Mormonism Anti-Oriental Orthodox sentiment Anti-Protestantism Persecution of Jehovah's Witnesses Black legend Counter-Reformation Criticism of the Catholic Church Catholic Church sexual abuse cases Catholic Inquisition Controversies about Opus Dei European Wars of Religion List of people burned as heretics Pope as the Antichrist References <references>